Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I personally teach my dogs to walk completely off leash. Um, I know many of you have been asking how I accomplish that, how I get my dogs to be able to do a heel um, completely off leash, especially with a lot of distraction. So there are different ways to teach this and this is just my way and it works, obviously. So I'm going to show you how I accomplish it uh, from beginning to, to end. Um, also, keep in mind that, that this is a like a real life type of dog training. It's not a competitive obedience. So uh, the difference is in competitive obedience, you're gonna see dogs that appear happier because they are actually more excitable. You know, they're usually taught with a lot of uh, reward, a lot of praise, and uh, you know things that will stimulate their, their drive, like toys and treats. So that's fine in, for my training in the beginning, but the way that I train my dogs, I want them to be calm and actually be able to control their excitement more. So I don't use a lot of uh, stimulation uh, to, to create that kind of excitement and where the dog appears happier, but it's just a matter of them being actually more excitable. Um, and also the difference that I find when you teach dogs only using that other method, uh, the dogs are going to be basically expected to walk a shorter period of time and then get rewarded for it. So they're going to be expecting something um, versus like how I teach my dogs, they're going to be uh, calmer. They can be out for six, seven hours and doing the same thing and they're not going to get tired because they are just calm, they're not expecting anything, they're not having all that extra stimulation that um, some trainers would be using if you're doing competitive training. So uh, this breed is very versatile, you can actually do both types of training with the same dog and they will learn based on your tone, how you talk to them or even using different commands when you want them to be more excitable and when you want them to be calmer. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is how I get them to be calm, to be able to be completely off leash. Uh, I can put this dog in a car for hours and then walk for hours and then go to a restaurant and have them lay down there for hours and then drive back home and they're still going to stay calm the entire home, the, the entire time that, that they're, they're performing uh, this training you know, that they have received. So let's go and get started. So the first step, of course, is to teach a dog to walk on a leash. You, you know that you can't teach them to be off leash and in a reliable heel unless you have them on a good, reliable, loose leash walk. Um, of course, these dogs they are already trained, and right now they are on a command to actually just be themselves. So they're on like a release command. That's why they're acting like this to give you an idea of you know what your dog may be acting like. See, like right now, um, they're sniffing everything. They're distracted. Um, they don't know where they belong. Usually this is how your dog is going to be at first. So um, I'm gonna show you how to change that and how to start to get them to, to pay attention to you. 
Alright, so the first thing I do is teach them um, to, to stay by my left side. So whatever side you choose is fine. Again, this is not competitive obedience. So it's whatever is easier for you. But it's very important that, you be, that you're consistent with whatever side you choose. So if you're always training your dog on your left side, make sure that you keep them on your left side every time you take them out. If you have them in your, on your right side, same thing. Now, everything. I mean, like, they're not supposed to be sniffing anything. They're not supposed to be playing. No, no excitement, no uh, reaching out to people, nothing. They're supposed to stay like this. So every step I make, if the dog tries to go too, too, too far to the left or too far to the right, or they're not they're, you know, interested in everything else, I'm going to start to... Uh, reinforce that they stay next to me. Now remember, you already taught them to walk on a leash. The other very important thing that I do is teach them obedience. So they have to know sit, down, come, stay. I teach those commands before they ever start off leash training. I need them to have reliable obedience commands for those four commands that I just mentioned before they're ever allowed to be off leash. Before I'll trust them to be off leash, you know, in public. So, um, as I start to move with them, you see that I will start to redirect if I need to. So if they see a, a, a toy, uh, anything, yeah, a squirrel, something that gets their attention and they try to pay attention to that, I'm going to apply pressure to redirect. So th this, is, this comes after your dog already learned to walk on the leash, but it, the key part here that most people fail is by being very strict with re repetition and reinforcing what you want to teach them. So. You know, people stop, and the moment that you stop reinforcing what you want from them, they're going to start to do whatever they want to do. Uh, they're going to start to test you, they're going to start to wonder a little bit more. So, I'm very strict and very to the point with what I want from my dog, so they know when they're on the leash, and I give them a heel command, that they, I want them like this. No matter what I'm doing, uh, where I'm at, I want them to behave like this, and they, they pick up very fast. So, I'm going to start with giving them the command, and let's see how they do. Now, um, I'm going to walk farther away and uh, there's a rock that they were playing with and you see uh, they may try to go get the rock and you see what I do to redirect them. But if they're going too fast, but push. You want to apply pressure. You want to reinforce the heel command on the leash before they can ever be off leash. And this sound that you heard is for them to stop. So you see how it gets their attention. I also like to have a, a, a command or a sound that I can make to let the dog know I want them to stop. Push. down, stay, and come are very important commands before you can trust your dog up. Come. Do curl. Now, once they come, see how they're excited? I have to start reinforcing. Push. Good. So, these are already trained. I'm trying to give you an idea as much as possible, but let me give you an example here. Um, if your dog is not yet trained on the leash, Everything that moves not be a distraction. Kind of like this. They saw me picking up a rock, it became a distraction. So this can be anything. If, if your dog doesn't have a lot of training, this can be just a person walking on the, other, on the other side of the road. It can be another dog. It can be anything. You know, every dog is different. They get distracted. But it's all the same idea. This is their distraction right now. And this is how you go about redirecting them. They are never going to be reliable at leash unless you have a good off switch, a good command that you can tell them that stops this excitement and stop the distraction um, because otherwise it, it just won't work. Uh, Fuss, put them on, a, on the heel command again and then I'm going to throw the rod. Uh, Fuss, and redirecting so I can apply pressure with the leash. I also use this technique right here uh, that I want to show you on the side. When I apply a little bit of pressure, it gets the dog's attention. You see that? Six, 
So I'm gonna do it again, slide. I'm gonna do it again until they actually stay. Slide. Again, they're already trained, so now they know. I'm not holding them back. So the more you practice, the more distractions you include in your training, and the more you expose them to different things, the better they're going to be in the long run off leash. Next step, we're going to uh, start to do drop the leash. So we're gonna do, after we, you practice all what I just showed you, and this, how long it's going to take, it's gonna vary. It depends a lot on how much knowledge you have when it comes to dog training. It depends on the level of training that your dog already has. Uh, it depends a lot of, on your dog and the breed that you're training. So I can't tell you exactly how long, but it doesn't matter. As you practice with your dog, you're going to realize you know, if they're, if they're getting to the level where you can trust them off leash. If your dog is not doing what I just showed you, which is ignoring distractions, obeying the, the basic commands, and walking on a loose leash, they're not ready to go off leash. That's the, the key for you to understand what you need to do. Now, after all that is done, I go to drop in the leash. So I start to uh, do the, the same command, but with the, the leashes down, because this way I can step on the leash in case the dog uh, gets distracted and tries to get away from me, it's easy for me to step on the leash, better than having nothing at all. So it gives me a little bit of security as I'm practicing with a dog that is just started in training. Fuss. So here I'm gonna drop the leash and reinforce. Fuss. Go slow with them. Fuss. Fuss. The other thing is if a dog starts to get distracted, I can pick up the leash and do a quick redirection to let the dog know I'm watching them. Fuss. But at the same time, I'm, I'm leaving most of the work for them to do. Blots. Blots. So again, all with the loose leash. Uh-uh, flats. And again, reinforce everything. I didn't ask you to get up yet. So you have to reinforce every command. Make sure the dog can turn both directions. So to the left. Again to the left. And then to the right. Fuss. Fly. Good. All right. Once your dog gets to this point, um, you're gonna start to practice all everything that you just said. Everything, all of what we just did, you're gonna practice over and over again in different places with different distractions. So take them to tractor supply, take them to lowers, take them to stores that allow you to bring the dogs in and practice everything on the leash and kind of maybe drop in the leash if you can, if you start to trust your dog. Uh, once you do that for long enough and you feel like your dog is really responsive, every command you give them, whether it's heel, sit, down, come, stay, all those commands, the dog is very responsive to it and paying attention and you're not having to apply a lot of pressure on the leash anymore because your dog learned over time that every time they're doing something you don't want, there's pressure. And when they're doing something you want, there's loose leash, it's calmness and the dogs like that. So once they get to this point, we're gonna uh, do what I just said, practice in different areas, and then we're gonna finally start to let them off leash. And I'm gonna show you how that is done inside loads. Okay, so another important step that I forgot to mention, because these dogs are already trained, so I kind of skipped that by accident, but one tool that I do use to reinforce what I showed you, because sometimes just doing the tug on the leash on a regular flat collar, uh, or you know anything else that they're using a harness it may not be enough to get into your dog's attention So this collar is a restrictive collar that will teach a dog boundaries and you teach a dog to restrain themselves Now a lot of people are afraid of them because of the way they look like they look like they're you know meant to torture your dog and hurt your dog uh, and like have all types of physical control of your dog It doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily work like that. So the way that this collar works is by the sensation of the collar. So um, as you can see, when you're selecting this collar, it's very important that you get the ones that have the round tips. Check them because you know every collar may come out a little bit different. So I make sure there are no sharp edges out there because this is not to puncture your dog. This is simply for you to have a sensation around your dog's neck that gets your dog's attention, basically. So I find that absolutely no reason to not use this collar um, because it's a very safe and effective method to train your dog. Uh, I have trained thousands thousands of dogs and many times I have run, run into clients that were very afraid. They, they were afraid to even 
look at this collar. And once I show them that this collar is safe, I show them by doing this. You can tell I can punch the collar hard. It does not hurt. It's not pointy. It's very important to realize that. So people are like, so how does that work then if it's not hurting the dog? Again, that's your your mind right there. I don't even know why you think that way. You think the dogs only learn if they get hurt? No. Your dog doesn't learn because they're getting hurt by the collar. I get that a lot. Like, you know, that I'm lying that the collar doesn't hurt because otherwise it wouldn't work. No, it works because it creates sensation around the dog's neck that is more evenly spread that basically allows your dog to understand what you're trying to get from them. Better than when there's a flat call applying flat, uh, uh, like a uh, flat pressure against their throat. This will not hurt your dog if it's used correctly. If you're not sure how to use it, don't use it at home by yourself. Get a professional to help you. Other than that, it's a very safe and effective tool. The dogs both have the prone collar on them. And basically I want to show you the difference of how this collar works. When they have the collar on, uh, the amount of pressure that you have to apply to get the dog's attention is much less than when they don't have the collar on. So if I want them to sit, for example, I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure up and I don't have to ask them. This just reinforces the command. So this will again help you reinforce all the basic commands as well as the loose leash. But if I want them to come forward, you see very little pressure. It communicates with the dog. If I want them to turn around. Again, very little pressure. I can use, I can keep my hands basically open and just that one finger there will be enough to get your dog to be. So again, this collar will really help you as you can see. Now let's go and test the dog off. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're able to learn something from this video and hopefully be able to teach your dogs to be off leash. Even if you never take them out in public, it's great to be able to just have your dog standing next to you without having to constantly hold them back, restrain them all the time. So they're just calmer, they know what is, what is expected from them, and they're happy to do it. So I hope you're able to accomplish the same with your dog. Let me know if you have any questions about this video in the comments below and I'll be answering you. Um, also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and go to Facebook and Instagram and follow us at The Ultimate German Shepherds. See you next time. And just one more thing before I go guys, the following item is part of my next giveaway that will happen in a week from now. So if you like a chance to win this beautiful uh, doormat that you're going to see in the next clip, uh, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel, comment something below, um, let me say hi or let me know that you want to enter in this contest uh, and then go to my Instagram at the ultimate German Shepherd and send me a message there. We're going to pick one of the... Uh, people who message us on Instagram and let us know that you are interested in possibly winning this giveaway um, so and just one more thing before I go guys this beautiful doormat that you're going to see in the next clip is part of my next week's giveaway so if you're interested in participating and um, getting a chance to win this definitely go and subscribe to my channel 
and say something in the comments and then go to my um, Instagram at the ultimate German Shepherd and follow us there send us a message we're going to pick one of the people who message us on Instagram and let us know that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel and followed us on Instagram and that you'd like a chance to win this nice German Shepherd doormat uh, that you're going to see in the next clip so um, uh, good luck and stay tuned because almost every week I'm doing a new giveaway and you don't want to miss out. Hi, Yara. <laughs> Alright, bye-bye. Got a new toy today and I'm about to let them play with it for the first time.